In 2020, I completed every goal that I wrote down at the beginning of the year. And guys, it was 2020. So the fact that I completed every goal that I wrote down is amazing. And I wanna share it with you guys today in five easy steps. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Hillary, your certified Enneagram life coach, and I love to teach you guys the Enneagram in the simplest way possible. You guys know that. Before we get started, don't forget to push that subscribe button. And a really important part is clicking the bell that's next to the subscribe button. That will tell you every time a video goes live. I've heard a lot of you saying that you didn't even know that I had those like nine videos go live within two weeks because YouTube didn't tell you. It is a crazy thing. Even though you may be subscribed to my video, it doesn't mean YouTube is gonna notify you. So both of those are important. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and get to the real reason why you guys are here today, which is goal setting. And it is gonna be from my perspective, which is an Enneagram type nine, and you guys would have seen in the title um, that this is a confessions of an Enneagram type nine video. But I do believe all of these steps that I'm gonna share with you might actually help you even if you aren't a type nine. It's just these five as a type nine really, really, really helped me accomplish all my goals that I wrote down last year. Truth be told, as an Enneagram type nine, I have kind of always felt like goals are kind of unattainable, that I can't reach them, or that I sit down at the beginning of the year and I write them down and I get really excited for them. But my follow through, really does stink. It really does. But this last year I decided no more. My follow through is going to be good. I'm going to actually follow through. I will say that I'm great at vision casting. I'm great at making a plan once I sit down and do it because that's the hardest part for me as a nine is actually sitting down and doing it. So what I used to do, and I've done this for so many years, is at the beginning of the year I get myself, let's see, do I have something right here? I don't know. Here's a journal. Brand new spanking new journal. Um, oh, journal, journal. I don't know if you can see it, you probably can't, but um, you know, brand new pages, right? And I get myself a brand new pen and I get so excited to write down my goals and I open up the page and this is from November, 2018, day one. That's what it says. It says, I am starting a new journal. I wanna start this journal out with dreams and goals and what's happening in my life. And so I literally write down all my goals and this is super embarrassing. I wasn't even planning on sharing this with you. The next, hopefully, oh, okay, <laughs> this is in November. All right, so I actually started early on this one. I wrote down goals and then the next entry is in December and I write down all these personal goals and time to dream and different th things like that. I wrote down faith goals, personal goals, business goals, family goals. January 7th, I wrote again. Then you flip to August. And then I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So that year I wasn't really good at writing in my journal, but I started off strong. How many of you guys can relate to what I'm saying? You start off strong at the beginning of the year, but then as it goes, you forget. Like. I probably even forgot I bought this, if I'm being honest with you, and didn't write very much in it. It just doesn't work out for me to do it this way. And I'm so glad I've realized it now, but I'm even more excited to share with you guys a way that did work for me this year. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started into step one. What is step one in achieving your goals? I believe it is to write them down. And so where I had the first step down, and I've done this for many, many, many years. I have another journal right here that I probably did the same darn thing in. Um, I have lots of journals, guys, because I love buying journals. It's, oh, and then there's another one underneath there. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Okay, moving along. The key here is to write it down. I was on the right track. It's where you write it down that I believe matters. And what I did in 2020 was I wrote it down on a big chalkboard in my office. And when you are writing them down, it's important to start small. Start with your small goals first and Write the ones that are, you know, you're like, okay, those are achievable. And then go to the next piece where you're like, okay, 
These are a little bit more dreams you and then go really big. I believe write all your goals down, everything that you want to accomplish for the year. Um, just like I did, it could be in your personal life. It could be in your business life. It could be in your spiritual life and just any, any parts of you that are, that you want to write down, write them down. I just believe that that is a really important piece is to take what's in here and what's in here and get it somewhere. And that actually moves us right along into step two. And I kind of hit on this, but the, the step two is put them where you will see them every single day. And like I said, mine are in my office. I walk by them every single day. It's a chalkboard right as I walk through the store in my office, there's a big chalkboard and all my stuff is right there. I haven't touched it other than to check stuff off for the entire year. I didn't erase things. I did actually end up adding two things as I went through the year. But um, yeah, I, I just really believe that an important part of goal setting is putting them where you will see them every day. And I think I was trying to think of this today. I was like, okay, well, what would I do if I didn't have an office? Where would I put them? Well, I'd probably get like a poster board and put it on my wall in my bedroom. That's, that's something I would do maybe in my closet if I had enough space in my closet because I'm in there every day. Another place I was thinking of, I have a really big mirror in my bathroom and maybe on half of it, I would just get like a, uh, what are they? Not a Sharpie, uh, just like what you would write on a whiteboard. And I would write those, write your goals down somewhere where you can see them every single day. I just really believe that that is an important piece, especially for a type nine so that we don't forget because I am really good at forgetting and I'm really good at obviously writing them down and then never going back to check them until maybe the next year. And then I'm like, oh, and some of them I do end up hitting just because, you know, they were goals that I probably was going to hit. But a lot of them I'm like, oh, darn it. I totally forgot that that was a goal and it kind of makes me sad. And so now I'm like, no, what are my actual goals? What do I want to think about and make sure it's part of my daily life every single day of the year? All right, so let's move along to step three. What is step three? It is define your why. Why do you wanna do it? This is what will motivate you guys. If you know your why, why do you wanna achieve this goal? When do you wanna achieve it by? What do you wanna achieve? Like all three of those things are really important and be specific, write it down and don't be afraid to dream big. I dreamed really big this year and I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of my goals had to do with my business um, some of them were personal and some of them were business. And a lot of them were, uh, my YouTube goals because at the beginning of 2020, January, 2020, I believe I had between three and 600 followers on YouTube. I will double check that for you and put that right here, but I'm pretty sure it was a very low number. And so some of my goals were like, Hey, um, in order to be profitable on YouTube, I need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours watched. And so those were some of my goals. And then I was like, and then, so those are attainable. And then the next piece is I'm going to dream bigger. And so I wrote 2000 subscribers and 8,000 hours watched. And then I wrote, you know, 3000 subscribers and 4,000 and 5,000. And I think I topped it out, um, around 5,000 and I hit 5,000 in December or, or maybe November. I'm not for sure when I hit 5,000, but guys, I hit those goals. And I really believe part of it was because I knew my why. I knew I wanted to teach the Enneagram on this platform so that I can give some free information away to people that are struggling to figure out who they are and, and what they want to do and, and stuff like that. My heart really, really um, breaks for people and I want to see people succeed. And so therefore my vision and my why aligned with what I was doing. And so that's really important to do. I did write down, you know, when do you want to do these by? And I wrote it by um, the end of the year. And so I didn't really write goals down where I was like, okay, I want to reach this by this date and then reach this by this date. I didn't do that. I might do that this year, but last year it was just like, okay, by the end of 2020, this is what I want to reach. And guys, remember, we had no idea what 2020 was going to look like. So but I still reached my goals. And so I really believe that it didn't matter. You know, I wrote them down. I believed in them. And in the end, this is what motivated me. Seeing it every single day. Um, that was a big piece of the motivation. Okay, so let's move along to step four. Step four was a little harder for me, um, but I do believe it's a big one in reaching your goals. And this goal would be, is there anything you need to change or take out of your life in order to achieve your goal. 
That's a big one, right? Because I think for me, um, what that looked like was I had to give up things that I wasted time on. I have so many time wasters, guys. You guys know type nines, our deadly sin or deadly passion or core weakness, whatever you want to call it, is sloth. And so that is something I struggle with daily. And I knew that there was some er there was some areas in my life that needed to get cleaned up. And so I took off a game on my phone that I really, really, really loved. And I didn't know I was going to take it off for the whole year. I actually just thought I was going to take it off for a month. I was like, okay, I'm going to give myself a month without it. I still don't have it back. You know why? Because now I've identified it as something that wastes a lot of my time and I don't think I'm strong enough yet. So I don't think the game is bad. I just think I'm not ready for it to be back in my life and to be taking time away from what I should be doing. Another one for me was reading novels or fiction. Um, I love to read fiction. I love to lose myself in a book. Uh, books call out to me way before TV and movies do. And this is one where I was like, you know what? I think I need to take a break and stay present in my own life and stay awake. And so in order for me to do that, I had to take some really fun, amazing things that I love out of my life, at least until I met those goals and I felt like I can responsibly have these things back in my life, which I still don't. So clearly I'm not responsible enough yet, but that's okay because I really, really love where um, this last year has taken me. I love all the growth I've seen. And I will say my word of the year last year was breakthrough. And I was like, okay, I want to break through on my YouTube channel and my social media and different areas and my life and personal and just a lot of different areas and my health and breakthrough was my word. And I will say in the end, the breakthrough was in my own spirit. Like, I don't know, does that make sense in my own soul where the breakthrough happened by me staying awake and being present? That was part of the breakthrough of not sleeping, slipping back into old habits and um, not falling asleep to my own dreams and desires, but really staying present. And it takes so much work and it's taken me so much work to keep staying here. But I do believe that that was a big piece to me reaching my goals this, la this last year. All right, so the fifth step, this is a big one, especially if you're type nine, but I actually believe if you're all types because you might be linked to the type nine or this just might be something that you might struggle with. It's not just for the type nine, but it is a big one for us. And the fifth step is you need to believe you can do it. It's, it's a lot of it is in our mind, guys. We can trip ourselves up. And so I really believe that we, we need to believe we can do it. We need to believe in ourselves. We need to believe in what we write down of like, yes, I can do it. I can accomplish it. For the nine specifically, we struggle with our presence mattering. Is that a word? Mattering? Matter? Okay, your presence matters. That's our struggle. And for me, I've had to kind of put that lie down daily and go, no, my presence does matter. You know, um, I don't want to believe that lie anymore that my presence doesn't matter in the YouTube world, in my personal life, in my, in my world with my friends and my family and social media and different places. You know, it's not like a narcissistic thing, but it's just me waking up going, no, my presence matters and staying on the path that God has for me matters. It matters whatever path you are on, because of course, more than likely you're not a YouTuber, more than likely you're not even in my lane, but think about the path you are on and stay on it. And don't get sidetracked by everybody else that's on that same path. That is a big one for me. I had to keep some blinders on and just stay in my own lane because when I would look over here and look over here and see other people in my same lane doing it better, or at least what I thought was better, I would start to believe that my presence didn't matter in this world. Not the world in general, but in the worlds that I'm in right now professionally, right? Or even in my friendships and stuff. And so I would be like, oh, my presence actually didn't matter. But it did and it does. And I'm here to tell you, stay in your own lane. And when you, this is, okay. So this is just, a, this is a freebie. This is a bonus. It's not even in my notes. Um, I really believe this though, though guys. Whenever you find yourself looking into a different lane of someone else's and thinking they're better, you know what you should do? Tell them they're doing amazing. That's what I've been doing. Anytime it creeps in, I make sure to celebrate them. I just do because I'm like, you know what? We don't know. They might be thinking that about me, right? And so that is how I've been able to 
put that lie down and not believe that lie and stay in my own lane is anytime I feel that maybe it's envy, maybe it's jealousy, you know, because we can struggle with any of those core weaknesses. Um, I just, the nine just, you know, mostly struggles with sloth, but anytime I feel any of that creeping in, I tell myself, okay, well now you're going to celebrate them. Okay. They're doing amazing and tell them it's important that we tell other people that their presence matters too, even if they're doing better than us, or at least what we think is better than us. And so when that lie creeps in, just replace it with truth. You know, when you're like, oh, my presence doesn't matter, replace it with my presence does matter. And maybe I don't know who it actually matters to right now, but it doesn't matter. That part doesn't matter. You know what matters? That my presence matters to me. That is the key. And my presence does matter to me. So I've laid the lie down and I've picked up the truth. Okay guys, so that's all I have for today. Those are the five things that I really believe will help you make and reach your goals in 2021. It's exciting, I'm excited for you guys. And if you feel led to share any of your goals that maybe you want others to help, help you be held accountable for, or you just wanna share them because you're excited and you're like, gosh, this is a goal I'm gonna reach, put those in the comments box below. I'd love to read them. I'd love to celebrate you. I'd love to cheer you on. Um, because we're all in this together, guys. So thank you so much for watching today. Um, it, you know, I never like to leave without letting you know, if you don't know your type, if you've watched this video and you're like, goodness, I don't even know my type. I offer a discover you typing session. It's a one hour zoom call with me. All that information is linked in the description box below. And let's see if you want to follow me on social media, you can go find me at Enneagram and coaching over on Instagram. So that's all I have for today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And until next time, bye guys.